Ghost kitchens are, of course, the hottest thing in the restaurant industry right now, and also in retail, when you look at how it's breaking down and who is shaking out. Today, we're gonna dive into the players of Ghost Kitchens. My name is Paul Barron, this is the Barron Report. All right, so there has been an evolution over, really over the last maybe five years of where we've seen Ghost Kitchens, virtual brands, uh, dark kitchens, all these different variations start to develop. Obviously, with the recent events last year in 2020, that, of course, amped up everything, and everybody was moving very quickly uh, to how this whole movement uh, is kind of going to go in the future. And really, some of the big things that I think are going to be changing is who are the players. Now, from time to time, I'll do these market movers. Uh, the market mover sessions are pretty straightforward. We just want to break down what and who are doing uh, things that can either one, help their business, or maybe help uh, a particular industry. In this particular case, we're not doing a stock advice for you, uh, though I don't give advice, but we're not doing a stock analysis, but I am looking at some publicly traded companies that are utilizing this particular technology. Um, and, I, and I will say technology, but lightly, but for the most part, it is a service platform, even though a lot of times there are, is technology uh, kind of attracted to it. Um, this was uh, came over from Nation's Restaurant News. They did a, a piece out here on Ghost Kitchen Brands rollout, multi-concept food service offering at Walmart. Walmart, of course, is gonna offer kiosk-based ordering on-site, third-party delivery restaurant for basically CPG food brands uh, for delivery of restaurant and CPG food brands, food brands. So that's gonna be interesting in the sense that we'll see potentially uh, consumer packaged good products that might end up uh, spinning out some sort of product that would be a virtual-like brand. So there could be some interesting things there. The new service will allow shoppers uh, in those locations to select items from menus of about 15 national and regional concepts. Uh, this is Quiznos, Salad Works, others combined in a single order. Uh, the on-site kitchens, meanwhile, will also serve the uh, delivery hubs for those brands via third-party delivery services such as Uber Eats. So you're going to have kind of a cross-utilization of how these uh, ghost kitchens will be utilized, which I think is a good thing in the sense of uh, Walmart, because obviously you do have a certain amount of captive audience there with customers who are coming in and out. But with it being a hub or a satellite kitchen for some of these brands, for Uber Eats drivers, Postmates, et cetera, that's going to give them uh, proximity in being able to get into some of these neighborhoods where maybe restaurants are not. So that's a big, big advantage. Here's the thing I think that will really help with uh, moving Ghost Kitchen into some of these retailers. Walmart could become maybe the biggest kitchen Ghost Kitchen operator out there. And if you think about the number of locations that Walmart has, and then potentially, let's say each one of these get five brands each, You've just uh, really increased the dynamics there in terms of what Walmart's been doing in food sales. Uh, so that could be a player. Whether or not it does anything in terms of driving their stock, I, I think it's a little bit early. There needs to be mass adoption from that. I do think we'll also see this happen in other retailers like Target, uh, possibly someone like Costco or Sam's Club that could become uh, a player in these particular categories uh, in terms of ghost kitchens. And I think you'll start to see this in other non-traditional areas, which is, uh, and you've probably seen some of these already start to appear if you look at what Reef Technologies or Reef Kitchens is doing, uh, where they're basically taking over uh, some parking garage areas and putting in container style uh, kitchens and being able to serve into these urban centers. Uh, if you look at companies like uh, Cloud Kitchen, what Travis Kalanick is doing, you've got Kitchen United, and I'm going to kind of break down each one of these players and give you maybe some reasonings as to why I think they might play. So if you're looking for one, maybe you're looking for what are some um, you know factors, contributors that could drive particular companies, uh, either one, to be very successful in food sales, or if you're an operator and maybe you're trying to figure out, okay, which one of these platforms should I use if I want to start spinning out um, Ghost Kitchen? So let's just kind of jump into a couple of data points first. One is the consumer transactions from Ghost Kitchens. Now, we've been tracking Ghost Kitchen data, and we continue to kind of add to this on an ongoing basis, but we really started diving into this uh, last year in Q2, which is really when we started seeing uh, good movement in the ghost kitchens because obviously they they were delivery only in most cases. So 
they were really already on top of that. But it was a bit of a flat line of transactions and return and refer uh, until around Q4. So flat line around 296,000 of the ones we track. I know there's a lot more uh, potential transactions that are happening and a lot more ghost kitchens that we are not tracking because they might be one-offs that are showing up in this data. Uh, that came went up slightly in Q3 to 300,000. Also, uh, the return and refer, meaning I order from a ghost kitchen today, and then uh, I also ordered from that ghost kitchen, you know, maybe a week later. So uh, return and refer is a very important thing. It, it really jumps up in Q4 to 321,000. And then uh, here we are in Q1, which I anticipated it to slow down. And instead, it continued to climb. Now, the reason I think is uh, going to be talked about on the next slide, and that's the compounded growth of where ghost kitchens are going. But it does, the one thing that I am concerned about is the Q4, let me jump back to that slide on the transactions, uh, is on the Q4 number of return and refer. It did not equal or pace acceleration. So you could look at that a couple of ways. One, a lot more potential options. You could look at it as, okay, people are, they tried it, they, you know, they're moving back to their traditional brick and mortar for their uh, takeout or their pickup. Um, or something happened in terms of the ghost kitchen quality and we had a lot of, of client or customers that just said, hey, this isn't, you know, it's not for me. But anyway, it did climb slightly, but it did not keep pace uh, from the growth of 321 to 406. So that's, that's kind of the big thing to know. If you look at growth potential, and where this is going. Um, early Q2, we had about 10,000 ghost kitchens, individual locations that were tracked. Uh, we saw a pretty significant growth in Q3 uh, to 13,500, 18,000 by the end of the year. We think that's gonna, uh, has accelerated up to almost 30,000, 25 uh, here in Q1. Where we think this go is going to go when you look at the growth um, of where it was in Q1, in, excuse me, in 2020, which was a 3989 number all the way to 8600, that's where we are Q1 21, versus where we'll see this in the rest of 21 and uh, early 2022, uh, this is gonna be a pretty dynamic growth because you're gonna jump from basically, let's take Q4, you're gonna jump from uh, last time year, this time last year from 6,000 restaurants or ghost kitchens to 18,000, so that's almost triple, it is triple. So that's a pretty significant number. The key here is that almost every restaurant operator worth their salt right now have either one spun out some sort of ghost kitchen operation or they've gone all in and really started to maximize on where ghost kitchens are going to be. So let's talk about a few companies. This first one is Crave. Now Crave is kind of an op part of an operator and at the same time a ghost kitchen operator. So this is a company that uh, op offers a variety of brands. This is kind of a breakout of some of their brands, Elliot's, uh, the Tony O's, um, Wingdom, RHS, um, uh, Percolate, and then Marite, just to give you an example. They also offer some services here of point of sale and multi-kitchen tech. So that's giving you basically some uh, kitchen, basically running multiple different and types of kitchens in a single operation. So this could be an interesting program where they're packaging up some brands. You as an operator can come in with kind of these turnkey products and you've got all the tools and solutions already in the place. Because of that, I like this brand and I'm gonna give them an 8.6 in terms of where I think they might stand uh, in the Ghost Kitchen player group. Now there's a lot of variations here that I'll go through and, and some of the big players and why. Let's jump to the next one. This one's fairly new, a company called Chef Ready. Now Chef Ready is um, more of a facility. You know, so they are, they've taken basically a commercial kitchen maybe in an area where uh, it has enough bedroom capacity. When I say bedroom capacity, I mean access to people in a community to where you can sell into that marketplace and get logistical advantages. Um, Chef Ready is kind of interesting because I think when you look at operators that maybe either one were displaced, out of work, you know, chefs, independents, all these different, the, the, the need for them to go ahead and build another business is already there. The question is, is how are they gonna be able to do that 
Um, and I think that is where a company like Chef Ready comes in because you're going to have low cost to entry. In most cases, you're operating with many other operators inside, so you've got some cross opportunities there uh, from ideation as well as maybe partnering, which could really be a part of kind of their whole network. I think they will have to eventually move to providing some sort of platform integration and, and or a, uh, some sort of connected digital platform or benefit much like what Crave has done uh, with trying to give them a point of sale and some kitchen, multi-kitchen technology. I think that's what uh, Chef Ready is gonna have to do. Because of that, I give them a 7.9, but I'd love to get them, them on our show because I think that what they're trying to do in terms of commercial kitchen, and because this will open up not operators who have other restaurants, potentially this is gonna go after people who either one, don't have a restaurant, and they're looking to start one, uh, it could open up a whole new uh, you know, category of restaurants that could really start to accelerate growth back into the industry. So I think that's gonna be a big one. The next one is Reef. They're based right here in Miami. Um, Reef is probably the most mature, definitely the most well-funded uh, in terms of how their uh, structure is gonna be done. This company is, again, they've got kind of that same kind of uh, vibe in terms of being able to really offer uh, an existing operator a vehicle to get your business out there, start to create logistical advantages, you know, create new benefits of your business being in a place maybe that you could not do a brick and mortar. This is something that I think will be uh, very successful. I think Reef, as long as they can stay on track with how they're going to grow and scale their business, uh, and they can continue to attract key brands. That's the other thing, because this, this business, like Kitchen United and some others, really have to attract key brands to be able to move to that next level. So I, I do like what they're doing. And because of that, I'm gonna give Reef an 8.6. Um, and I think there are some things that they will probably have an advantage over many of these players on, and that is the digital side of things, being able to implement and develop new frontiers. It won't be long before I see maybe, you know, autonomous vehicles coming in and playing a part. We just talked to a company on one of our other shows, uh, TechPath, that, and it was a company called Refraction that is doing, potentially could have a big part in, especially in urban delivery, which a lot of these ghost kitchens could really uh, be applied into these urban centers, especially when you look at real estate and just the, in the issue of restaurant operators not sure if they would go back in or new operators would go in and put the kind of investment. When you think about that and you think about autonomy and how that might play into it, I am a big proponent of ro robo delivery and where it's gonna happen. I think we're gonna see it much faster. There are some very, very interesting innovations and technology that is happening right now. So this could be a big player. And if I were to pick a company that could make it happen um, Reef would be one of them. Now, there's a couple others that I think could also make it happen as well. I want to jump to one, and that is Cloud Kitchens. Cloud Kitchen, of course, you know this company, probably their CEO. It's a guy by the name of Travis Kalanick who launched Uber and Uber Eats. Um, when he was ousted at Uber, this was the destination. Basically, what they're doing is they're refreshing real estate going in and dropping in commercial kitchens and then basically giving you logistics and fulfillment along with proprietary tech and some facility management. Um, you know, so it does give you the ability to kind of scale without having to scale people, without having to scale a lot of different aspects of your own business. It's kind of that gig approach toward uh, potentially being able to launch uh, a variety of ghost kitchens across the country, especially when you're looking at real estate. That's another big factor. Uh, when restaurant operators are trying to grow is real estate. It's a big deal. Now, commercial real estate, don't get me started on that. I mean, we, we're going to see a complete revolution. Um, and I do think we are in a bit of a digital renaissance of where this industry and others are going to be going. There's just so much activity in the tech space and where this is going to happen. And I think all of these companies have a potential to really leverage tech and the connection to some of these retailers and operators, including companies like Walmart, Target, all those retailers that should be really ramping up on this uh, because I think this is a great benefit and I think it's gonna be a, a big deal. If you look at kind of this whole thing, here's a, a data point from um, Kitchen United that I thought was interesting. Uh, in 2017, 43 billion 
In 2022, they're expecting around 20, excuse me, 76 billion in food delivery. And we think here at Foodable, we think this is actually a light number in terms of its estimate. Um, even with the return to major dining and in dining, I think there will be a little bit of a, a pent up demand and, and a hit on that in terms of the number of companies that will be uh, getting and benefiting from that. But uh, at the end of the day, I think what we're going to see is a permanent shift into takeout delivery and some of that aspect to continue uh, to grow. So that's, that's a big deal. Uh, further, when you look at Kitchen United and where they're going, this is the other thing that I love about them is their mix program. And if you look at, at what they're trying to do is basically they're up aligning a operation with a multi-operational ability for someone to place an order across the array of restaurants. And the ability to do that in a software platform or any kind of integration that can really kind of make it somewhat seamless for the consumer, meaning, hey, my, my kid wants tacos, my uh, son wants pizza, mom wants a salad. You know, it's that veto vote that has always been a problem in many of the takeout centers. So everybody kind of, you know, uh, settles for something that maybe they didn't want. So this is an opportunity right here to where they are really leveraging on this whole mix it up kind of angle. And I think this is a potential differentiator for them. Uh, the question will be, will all the other guys, of course, chase and follow this particular move, which I think is, is going to be interesting. They are residing over in Pasadena, San Jose, Scottsdale, Austin, Chicago, and uh, Chicago downtown. I think that's in the outer loop as well. So all of these companies, and because of that, I'm going to give Kitchen United my top score, and that's a 9.0. Uh, I think this company is probably the leader uh, when it comes to the ghost kitchen space and where the potential opportunity for it. Also, if I look at, uh, much like Reef, Kitchen United is very tech forward, and they're a company that I think could make some real interesting moves in going in this direction. I'm surprised that we haven't seen them moving in the retail direction more so than just what we're seeing right now with this light amount of retail activity. So all that being said, do your own research, check out these companies. And if you're looking at either launching a brand new restaurant, you're gonna do it via a ghost kitchen, or maybe you're an existing operator and you're gonna jump into it. This, these companies might hopefully can help you out and kind of get you going in the next round. The good news um, is these forward indicators. We've presented this a few times, but I want to just reiterate this of where the industry is going and where the takeout and delivery is going to be in the next few years. Uh, total restaurant U.S. population, and what that simply means is people that would and are ordering from restaurants, dining in restaurants, et cetera, 221 million. That equals out to around 241 billion occasions per year um, for the industry, which is by 2023 estimates, including our own, is we're going to see around uh, a number of around 58% of food away from r the restaurant. So if you think about the dynamics of where that is, uh, drive through has already been there for years. They've been in the upper 60s to close to 70% of food going through a drive through For this to go in and get that kind of density on regular restaurants, whether it's an eat-in restaurant, a uh, kind of grab-and-go, but close to 60%, and I think this is a little light by 2023 um, in terms of the total volume. That's going to change the landscape of the industry, and that's why these ghost kitchens really matter. The other thing is this is going to really blow up in terms of total volume. And that's what I mean by that is by 20, end of 23, early 24, we're going to see the movement to about $1.3 trillion in total sales for the industry, which means we got to add a lot, new, a lot of new restaurants and a lot of new reopens from the restaurants that we lost in 2020. Um, and this is gonna be, I think, part of the year that that happens, and I think Ghost Kitchens are gonna be the, the vehicle that makes it work. So, if you're listening to this over on the podcast, thanks for listening in over there. Make sure and leave us a rating. That's how we get feedback from you, our uh, audience. And it's also a great place, if you have an idea for the show, you can drop a note there. Uh, but additionally, you can also send us a note uh, via email just to producer at foodabletv.com, easy. And if you're really thinking, hey, wait a minute, I love this content, I wanna share it with my friends, subscribe right here on YouTube, make sure and hit the bell so you can get notifications of stuff that we're doing constantly. We are covering a lot of different factors here on YouTube. 
uh, which is business, food, and technology. And we have a whole new network called TechPath that really dives into some very advanced technology. If you have not had a chance to check that out, you can visit techpath.show uh, to learn more about what we're doing over there. So make sure and stick around. We'll catch you next time right here on The Baron Report.